Hello, I'm Dr. Sam and this is Dr. Sam's Health. Unfortunately, I was not able to post any new videos in the past couple of months. I was very busy with my day job. I've been traveling a lot and I had quite a few on-call shifts. All these activities, they took their toll on my ability to envision and create new videos and post them. It takes time, but now I'm back and I've got quite a few new ideas and I would like to share them with you. Today, I would like to answer one important question. How much muscle can we build? I bet that everyone who had ever been to a gym, who started working out more or less seriously, asked themselves this question. It sounds like something very simple, but the answer is not that obvious, and we really need this answer in order to be able to track our progress and to set realistic goals. Personally, I've tried to find this answer using Google, trying to read some blogs, watching some YouTube videos, but unfortunately, Everything that I found was pretty much a very standard story. When someone starts talking about that, they usually start talking about the ways our muscles grow, number of factors uh, affecting the muscle, muscle growth, uh, number of genetic parameters, and so on, and so on, and so on. And usually in the end of this blog or video, the author would state something along the lines, it depends. To be honest, I was quite disappointed with this kind of conclusion. All I wanted in the end of each video I watched is to hear some solid answer, some number or formula that we can use to calculate the amount of muscle we can build. Since I didn't find it, I realized that I have to take matters in my own hands. I'm a PhD, I'm a scientist, so I did come up with some approach and I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do in order to calculate the amount of muscle you can build. Moreover, I have developed my own tool that will make this process even easier for you. You can find it on my website in the toolbox section. A bit of a disclaimer, the formula that I've devised and the tool that I have designed, they only apply to adult males, and you will see why. So now we can talk about the three steps or three calculations we have to make in order to uh, get a good estimate of how much muscle you can build. I think it's only logical to start with analysis of our current body composition. And specifically, what we have to do is we need to calculate our lean body mass. I know that at this point some of you will say, wait a minute, I thought we were going to talk about muscle mass, right? Not lean body mass. And I know that these are different things, obviously. That lean body mass includes muscle mass, it includes the mass of our bones, of our internal organs, and so on. But the point I would like to make from the get-go is that when we start working out, our muscle mass will increase, whereas the other components of lean body mass will not change much. So our bone structure will likely remain the same. Uh, our internal organs will, know, will not grow significantly unless you're taking huge amounts of growth hormone and so on. So in the end of the day, the change in your muscle mass will approximate the change in your lean body mass. And uh, at the same time, it's very difficult to calculate your muscle mass to estimate it. In order to do so, we would need to use some very sophisticated tools, something like DEXA scan. Whereas most of the people, they don't have access to them or they cannot use them too frequently. So my approach is, instead of trying to calculate our current muscle mass and trying to estimate our potential muscle mass, uh, what I will do is I will calculate the current lean body mass and then we'll get some information about the potential lean body mass and then we'll be able to calculate the difference between these two. And this difference, the change in lean body mass, will effectively approximate the change in your muscle mass because other components of lean body mass will not change much. So the very first step in our calculation process is estimation of our current lean body mass. It's a pretty straightforward process and I'm pretty sure that you all are familiar with that. I had a whole video dedicated to different ways of calculating it. The easiest way to calculate your lean body mass, your body fat percentage, your total body weight is to use a floor scale. Most of them these days they are able to generate these numbers for you. So all you have to do is just to get your weight, uh, get your body fat percentage and subtract your body fat weight from your total body weight and the end result will be your current lean body mass. If you struggle with that for some reason, you can use calipers, you can use other methods. In the end of the day, you can just go on my website to the toolbox section. We've got the calculator for you that will help you. The calculators that we have there will just use certain body measurements to calculate your 
uh, approximate body fat percentage and your lean body mass. So now when we have the first number in our equation, we have to get to the second one, which would be your potential lean body mass. So this part is a little bit tricky because I had to find some sort of a good normative data. And I was lucky enough, if you remember when I was making a video about FFMI, I came across an article of Corey et al. who were studying the fat-free mass index FFMI in athletes who were using steroids and those who were not using steroids, and they came up with certain numbers. I know that a lot of people are criticizing this article, but even then in my video I said that I believe that this kind of research actually gives us a very good set of normative data. So what exactly we're going to use from this article is the data on 74 athletes who have been working out for at least a couple of years, so they were in a pretty good shape, they already uh, gained some muscle, and uh, what we have from the article was their FFMI, fat-free mass index. Uh, which was 21.8 on average, and they also reported the standard deviation, which was 1.8. I know that a lot of people will be unhappy with my decision to use this article as a source of information. I know that it had some flaws, some methodological issues, uh, but at the same time, I believe that the population that they studied, their sample, comprised of absolutely perfect group of people people who were working out, who claimed not to ever use steroids, who were working out for at least a couple of years. So, in the end of the day, the number that they came up with is pretty much a good representation of what we have in general population of people who work out. And definitely it represents something that you can strive for. As a side note, I would like to say that definitely the results that they had in this particular cohort of people they're quite far from your genetic potential. But again, these results are a good representation of what you can achieve in a couple of years of extensive uh, working out. One good thing about this study is that they did not report the lean body mass of these athletes. They actually reported uh, FFMI, which is a, an indicator that is calculated by dividing your lean body mass by your height in meters squared. So one item on this list, on the, in this formula, is very critical here. This formula already takes into consideration the differences in height. Now, if we take this FFMI of 21.8 as some sort of a good potential FFMI to strive for, we can reverse engineer it uh, in order to calculate your potential lean body mass which is, again, a very simple thing to do. All you have to do is you have to take this FFMI, 21.8, and multiply it uh, by your height uh, in meters squared. It's a very simple formula to use, and the end result is your potential lean body mass, uh, LBM, that you can strive for. And finally, the third step is super easy to do. Now, we, when we have your potential lean body mass, something that you can achieve after a couple of years of working out, and your current lean body mass, all you have to do is just to calculate the difference between these two. And this difference will be exactly the amount of muscle you can build if you work out for a couple of years. I'm pretty sure that some of you will, would like to know the range of values. Some of you will say that, you know, there are actually certain genetic variabilities uh, between one individual and another. Uh, there are certain differences in genetics, differences in nutrition, differences in stress levels, in uh, workouts, and so on and so on and so on. Yes, you would be absolutely right. And uh, we can actually calculate the range of uh, potential lean body mass using the uh, average FFMI of 21.8 and the standard deviation that was reported in the same article, which is 1.8. Since we have both the mean and the standard deviation of certain indicator, we can always calculate the standard error of the mean and the confidence interval for this value in any given population. To be honest, I don't want to bore you with some mathematical details, the intricacies of calculation of this range of values. Uh, for the sake of this video, I just wanted to give you a formula to calculate the potential of muscle building. If you are really interested in the range, all you have to do is just go to my website, go to the toolbox, and we've got a calculator there for you that will calculate the range for you. Not only the mean, but also the minimum and the maximum.
Apart from that, feel free to use the formula that I've given to you. The only thing I will ask from you is to use my name every time you use this formula. Just give me some credit. You can call it Dr. Sam's formula. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As you can see, there are quite a few useful tools on my website and there are quite a few things I would like to talk about on my YouTube channel. So again, subscribe, like the videos if you do like them. Please ask questions, make comments. I'm always happy to interact with you, to answer your questions, to bust some myths and so on. And that would be it for today. All the best.